and the United Nations. Mr. Secretary General Antonio Guterres, the floor is yours and muito obrigada. Thank you very much, uh, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. I'm happy to join you for this dialogue series and commend your focus on nutrition and food security on the African continent. For too long, nutrition, food security, conflicts, climate change, ecosystems and health have been treated as separate issues. But these global challenges are deeply interconnected. Conflict creates hunger. The climate crisis amplifies conflict. Economic insecurity is heightened by the pandemic and by inequalities in resources allocated for recovery. These problems are systemic and they are getting worse. Decades of progress on anger are being reversed. After improving steadily in all regions between 2000 and 2016, hunger has sharply increased in recent years. Over 281 million Africans, one in five, were under, undernourished in 2020. 61 million African children are affected by stunting, which can impact their physical and mental health throughout their lives. As always, women and girls are the most affected. When food is short, they are often the last to eat and the first to be taken out of school and forced into work or marriage. Our humanitarian operations are doing their utmost to help. Just last week, I announced the release of 30 million US dollars from the Central Emergency Response Fund to meet urgent food security and nutrition needs in Niger, Mali, Chad and Burkina Faso, bringing the total funding channeled through SURF in the Sahel to nearly 95 million US dollars since the start of the year. But this is a drop in the ocean. Humanitarian aid cannot compete with the systemic drivers of hunger. External shocks are further exacerbating the situation. An uneven recovery from the pandemic has put many developing countries on the brink of debt default. Inequality is enormous in that regard. The war in Ukraine has led to the highest food prices on record, and African countries are among those most heavily impacted, especially when this is coupled with rising energy bills and limited access to finance. I convened the Global Crisis Response Group on Food, Energy and Finance, involving all UN agencies and international financial institutions to provide data and analysis and to propose solutions. And the group immediately recommended that all food export restrictions should be lifted, strategic reserves should be released, and surpluses allocated to the countries in need. It is clear that solving this crisis also requires reintegrating Ukraine's agricultural production and the food and fertilizer production of Russia and Belarus into the world markets despite the war. And I'm continuing to pursue efforts to find common ground on this vital issue for people around the world. Dear friends, building resilience also requires addressing the climate crisis. African farmers are on the front lines of our warming planet, from rising temperatures to droughts and floods. Africa needs a massive boost in technical and financial support to adapt to the impact of the climate emergency and provide renewable electricity across the continent. 50% of climate finance must be allocated to adaptation and developed countries must finally deliver on their 100 billion US dollars climate finance commitment to developing countries. We are also advocating for immediate action from international financial institutions so that developing countries, especially in Africa, can invest in a strong recovery from the pandemic based on renewable energy. Ladies and gentlemen, the food systems are at the heart of all these challenges. The UN Food Systems Summit held last September showed that the transformation of food systems have immense potential. Many African states have appealed for a fundamental change through pathways of change that are inclusive and affect at the same time food security 
nutrition, social protection, the protection of the environment, and the resilience in the face of shocks. I applaud the African Union's decision to make 2022 the year of nutrition. This is a first step towards meeting the strong commitments made at that summit, thanks to national, regional, and global cooperation. We must build upon the experience that has been achieved and our collective expertise. Together, we must put these pathways in place. The United Nations Food Systems Coordination Center will help countries to implement these pathways for change, eliminate hunger and malnutrition, and promote sustainable agricultural practices. The international community must show it can handle the situation. It's inconceivable to reduce support at a time when needs are so major. The official development assistance is more needed than ever, and I urge all countries to show solidarity, to invest in resilience, and to prevent the current situation from becoming worse. Dear friends, Excellencies, during my recent trip to Senegal, Niger, and Nigeria, I was impressed by the resilience and the determination of the people whom I met. Women and young people in particular were fully committed for sustainable solutions allowing them to live in peace with their neighbors and with nature. If we work together, if we put humanity and the planet before profits, we can transform food systems, achieve the sustainable development goals and not leave anyone behind. We must eliminate food and um, hunger and malnutrition by 2030. The United Nations is at your side every step of the way, and I wish you fruitful discussions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary General, for such clear call for action. Indeed, if we join efforts, United Nations entities, member states and partners will be able to address this challenge. Now, I would like to introduce